In the practice of equine management and production, there are a great many subcategories and factors that play a role in the larger picture. On the medical and scientific side, the study and handling of disease is of utmost importance. Equine illness comes in a great many forms. These include nutritional or metabolic, pathogenic, and genetic. Within the cells of a horse's body, as with all eukaryotic organisms, there is a membrane-bound nucleus. This nucleus contains information about the horse's physical makeup in the form of chromosomes. The information these chromosomes contain is written in a complex, unique code called DNA. Specific segments of the DNA that code for a particular piece of information, such as coat or eye color, are called genes. A genetic disease or disorder occurs when proteins within a specific gene get scrambled or altered somehow. This is called a point mutation. These point mutations may be propagated to a horse's progeny, creating more individuals with the same genetic alterations. Essentially, more mutants, though probably not the kind you might imagine. One such disorder, known as equine hyperkalemic periodic paralysis disease, or HYPP, has a particularly fascinating backstory, the stuff almost of legend. Once upon a time, there was a horse named Impressive. Impressive was an appendix American Quarter Horse who earned his full American Quarter Horse Association registration in 1971. He was the first world champion of his breed and was famed for his success in the show ring and his impressive muscular stature. After his career ended, Impressive became quite the ladies' man. You know what I mean. Impressive became a father to some 2,250 foals, with several dozen going on to be world champions themselves. His stud fee climbed to outrageous heights, reaching some 25,000. In 2003, Impressive was estimated to have greater than 55,000 living descendants. His genes saturated the quarter horse community. But something dark was lurking there a mutation that no one knew about until it was already too late. On the gene SCN4A, a single one of Impressive's amino acids was different from the norm. This gene links to sodium channels in muscles, and this amino acid switch caused a change in sodium channel proteins important for inactivation. Therefore, in the presence of high potassium levels, including those induced by diet or extreme heat or cold, sodium channels in the muscle fail to inactivate properly. This causes muscle hyperexcitability, resulting in uncontrollable contraction and shaking, followed by paralysis. HYPP is a dominant genetic trait, meaning only one copy of the affected gene is required to obtain the disorder. If a healthy individual is bred to a heterozygous HYPP-affected horse, the offspring has a 50% chance of obtaining the disorder as well. If a healthy individual is bred to a homozygous HYPP-affected horse, the offspring has a 100% chance of obtaining the disorder. Because of the extensive number of individuals directly related to Impressive, a staggering 1 in 50 quarter horses will test positive for HYPP. The disease has never been observed in any individual not related to him. When a horse with HYPP is experiencing an attack, symptoms will include muscle trembling, prolapse of the third eyelid, abnormal whinnying, collapse, particularly of the hind limbs, and in extreme cases, death. Since 2007, the American Quarter Horse Association has required all descendants of Impressive to be tested prior to being registered and banned from registration all horses born after January 1st of that year with HYPP genetics confirmed by DNA testing to be homozygous for the condition. Additionally, the Appaloosa Horse Club has required foals descended from Impressive to be tested so that the results may be recorded on its certificate. The American Paint Horse Association just recently mandated that stallions must be tested for HYPP so that mare owners may make an informed decision before choosing a stallion for breeding to their mare. However, these organizations have yet to ban horses testing positive to be kept from registration and competition. This has caused some irresponsible people to continue to breed positive testing horses seeking the muscular enhancement correlated with HYPP. In doing so, they perpetuate the disease's existence. Moving forward, horses suffering from HYPP should be treated with extra care. It is important for them to receive a low potassium diet on a regular feeding schedule and to live low stress lives with plenty of exercise. The gene should be monitored more closely in breeding programs and in time methodically removed from the genetic pool. This is the only responsible solution for the betterment and welfare of these horses and the people who love and ride them.